We're going to chat about uh, attempts in Quebec to, I, I think, introduce euthanasia effectively in a few moments' time. But uh, first of all, a particular case here, which uh, is quite extraordinary. White supremacist, abusive father, shot dead by his son, happy families and all that. Margaret Somerville joins us now from Montreal. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, Margaret. Thank um, you, Michael. I mean, this case, it, uh, California, it's in California. This is a, a regional leader of a, of a Nazi movement, abused apparently his son. Um, he was 10 at the time when he shot his father. He's 12 now. I don't think it's so re relevant that the father was a Nazi. That's repugnant. But if he was so physically abusive of the boy and said that using violence is acceptable and the boy eventually used it, it's in many ways fully understandable. Yeah, although killing is never usually understandable, Michael. I mean, that's an extreme reaction. But um, uh, what it brings to mind are the cases where you look at uh, abuse within a, a couple and, for instance, some women have claimed that they've been abused and used that as a defence in certain murder cases. Mm. So it's similar to that. But this, this is a child. This boy was 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, if that was in Canada, the Criminal Code has got a provision, our Canadian Criminal Code, uh, Section 13, and it says that a, a, a young person under the age of 12 years can't be charged with a crime under the Criminal Code. Uh, you've, of course, got the Young Offenders Act that you could use. But the reason for that is that 12 is generally regarded as what the law calls the age of discernment. Yeah. That is the age at which you ought to be able to tell right from wrong. And my understanding is that they did have a, a sort of a, dis, a hearing about whether this young boy could tell right from wrong, and the judge decided that he could, even though he was only 10. Mm. It, it is tragic all around because if, and it does seem to be quite convincing, he was physically abused most of his life. And on top of that, that the father has such strange, uh, grotesque ideas of, of white supremacy and is so uh, ready to, to use guns and play with guns. And I can, I can understand how this would happen. I'm obviously not saying that it's a situation... Well, that, it actually was the father's gun that yes, the exactly. boy used. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, now, uh, this will affect a lot more people, I and mean, that's a particular case, but in Quebec, and it seems that some people are arguing that this is about uh, federal or provincial power, which seems to me rather banal. It's much uh, more profound than that. The, the fact of euthanasia in Quebec? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. That's what they are arguing. Uh, it, it seems to me, I haven't seen this report that was tabled yesterday. In fact, I don't know if it's publicly available. I couldn't find it, at least let's put it that way. And it's 400 pages long, Whoa. so it's going to take a while to read. And it's a report of a committee of three lawyers headed up by uh, a lawyer called Maître Jean-Pierre... Uh, oh, I've forgotten his name now. Sorry. That's all right. Sorry about that. But right. anyway... Um, Oh, Menard, Jean-Pierre Menard. And uh, they've recommended to the Quebec government how they, the Quebec government could pass legislation that would authorise what they euphemistically call medically assisted death. <laughs> but if you read the Quebec Legislative Assembly report that was, became public last April, that in that they say medically assisted death is euthanasia. Yeah. Uh, so doctors giving lethal injections. And what, what the position that seems to be being taken is that uh, a doctor carrying out euthanasia is carrying out an act of medical treatment, that this is simply the last act of good palliative care, mm. and therefore it's provincial jurisdiction and not federal jurisdiction. I very much doubt that the federal government will go along with that. I, I, I would think that. On, on the, the ideology of this, e, putting aside the, the, the various and numerous arguments, even if it ever became law, I don't know, I don't know that many doctors, but I don't know a single doctor who'd be willing to go along with this. That We can only assume that certain doctors may, and, that, and those few doctors will then be known by others, and, and, and they'll be chosen and selected. People will doctor shop. Uh, yes, uh, that, I think that's largely true. We do know, I mean, I can give you some statistics on that. We do know that on the whole... Doctors are the single group that are most opposed to euthanasia. In most of the surveys in countries similar to Canada, for example, England, uh, it comes out somewhere just under 80% of doctors say that they think euthanasia is wrong and they don't want doctors authorised to do it. Mm. However, uh, some doctors will go along with it. I've had personal experience of speaking with those doctors there was one doctor in uh, the Netherlands that I spoke to some years ago. 
And at a conference, he got up and said, I personally have carried out 1,200 cases of euthanasia. And the, and the audience gasped and someone said to him, well, you know, how could you do that? I mean, didn't you feel terrible? And he said, well, no. He said, I'm an anaesthetist and I'm used to putting, you know, knocking people out. So all I did was give the first half of an anaesthetic and not do the second half, which was resuscitation. So what we know is that doctors can get used to doing that. We also know that in the Netherlands that what you would guessed is correct, that usually there's a couple of doctors or one or maybe two in a hospital who do the euthanasia cases. So this idea that you've got your friendly family physician who's known you yeah. all your life and he'll do it doesn't prove to be true. Exactly. I mean, the big issue with this, though, it, I mean, it's the big federal jurisdiction issue, uh, but the other issue is where does it lead? Yes. How, how will your great-great-grandchildren die if we start legalising euthanasia? Yeah, yeah. We should have more time. This is compelling stuff and I think very dangerous as well. M Margaret, as always, a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Nice to talk to you. Thank you.